So I want to understand the value of human spaceflight. So I want one of you to tell me how NASA's human spaceflight programs advance the agency's overall mission. Today and in the future. And I also want you to explain how human spaceflight, in that it's in a context of other um, priorities for NASA, helps the human condition sufficiently to its budget in America. You're asking for a lot. <laughs> I will do my best, and I'll certainly let uh, my colleagues here help me if they would like. Uh, if you want to talk about technology, if you want to the technology which you have in your hands today, the technology that communicate around the world, the technology of communications itself, the technology have that I have in my iPhone today is technology that was given birth to 30, 40, 50 years ago. I skipped over my comments about technology that, that we're talking about in a proposal. Tech, exploration drives technology innovation, the, not the reverse. You have to can't lock a group of, of the most smartest young men and women in the world in a room, engineers, scientists, technicians, and say, go develop technology. For what? There has to be a purpose, just like there has to be a purpose in life. They have to know what they're trying to accomplish, what their goal is, what the problems are, uh, and, and then develop the technology that gets the job done, going to the moon, the technology that, that, that we developed to go to the moon, whether it was material. Look in our, our, walk in our hospitals today, walk in our classrooms today. Does that benefit our, our is that a benefit to us humans here on this earth today? I like to think it is. You can, you can go deeper into that, but let me go, let me get a little bit more philosophical. Curiosity is the essence of human existence. Who are we? Where are we? Where do we come from? Where are we going? Where's the life on Mars? Is Mars like Earth is going to look in a billion years? Are we what, like, what Mars looked like a billion years ago? I don't know. I don't have any answers to those questions. I don't know what's over the hill and around the corner, but I want to find out. It's, it's within our it's when our hearts and souls and desire to find out and seek knowledge. Discovery is what it's all about. And yes, we have been there, but we haven't been everywhere. There's a, there's a bottom to the ocean. You can walk the top of the highest mountains in, on this planet, and you can walk to the, on the depths of the deepest ocean, but you're still on Earth. And there is a difference between the frontier of space to, 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 to seek knowledge. What... Was there life on Mars? Is there life? Now, I know there has to be other reasons to go that that alone isn't enough. But that is one of the driving things. It's our destiny, I believe, to explore the unknown, to, ans to find answers to the questions. And God knows, for every answer we get, we'll come up with a dozen more questions. It's been that way all along. We've got more questions about the moon now uh, than we did before we left, before we went there. So... Uh, I have I'm probably not been as explicit as you'd like me to be, but the benefits to humans on this planet, whether it's communication satellites, weather satellites, predicting storms, whatever, you can go on and on and on. Those, those things were given birth to when Kennedy said, we're going to go to the moon. Though, we didn't have, he was asking us to do the impossible. He was asking us to do what most people didn't think could be done. And we didn't have the technology to do it. Is that technology, it's obsolete today in one sense, but American industry, American ingenuity has built upon that so that we have today what we have in our cars, in our airplanes, in our transportation, in every walk of life. Would that be what you were proposing, uh, Captain Cernan, in your uh, statement? 
Well, referred to what I think you asked at first uh, about all the infrastructure that it is needed to support the commercial sector, which is one of the reasons why I'm, I, th I think the cost will go way up as well as the time. Uh, the Aerospace Corporation, I think, did a report that said it would take uh, probably 10 to $12 billion to support the commercial sector, and it does not count the infrastructure, the simulators, the Mission reconfiguration of mission control, the air sea rescue, because it's got to come down, someone may come down where you don't want, all the, 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 the procedures, the, everything that you have to develop. I mean, a lot of people think that, you know, we played handball, when it came, to, came time to fly in space, we put on a spacesuit, jumped in a spacecraft, and went to the moon. We spent years and years to helping the engineers that at NASA, at Martin, at, at Rockwell, and, and helping design, develop, test. We were out there 24 7, six, eight, whatever number of years it took to get the spacecraft that we were going to fly, develop properly, and safe, that we had confidence in. So, how and when is that going to be prepared for? And what, are, what is the commercial sector going to? How are they going to handle that? How are they going to pay for it? Are we going to subsidize all that? Is it going to be a NASA program or a program that NASA pays for that we let someone else run? Are they going to respond to all our regulatory requirements on safety? These are things that I, I don't think have been addressed properly yet. I don't think they've, they've been looked at. As far as I, don't, I, I think what you asked is where I would go. You know, well, my opinion is probably not worth much these days. But I'm concerned in the near term about the gap. In the long term, I'm concerned about exploration because that's my bag, exploration, going where no man has gone before, doing whatever, not, what, is, what has not ever been done before, what others couldn't do, wouldn't do, or maybe were afraid to do. That's exploration. But in the near term, we need to, you know, I know how you feel about shuttle extension. I don't know anything about the, about the capability to finance. I think we ought to stretch a shuttle out and close a gap from the front end. I think we ought to have something that closes a gap on the back end. I don't believe that is commercial space. I believe it is something we've invested $9 billion in already called Aries One and Orion. Get it up, get it running, and, and instead of a potential gap of a decade, we might knock it down to three or four or five years. I don't know. But at least we'll, 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 we will tell the rest of the world that we're not going to stay slave to what they say we can do or can't do in space. We will have our own access. Even if there is a gap of a few years, we are going to get there from here. Get that done. Senator, and while we're in the process of doing it, if you want to redesign Constellation's long-term exploration objectives and build a new booster or whatever it takes, that's the time to do it.